Hey everyone, welcome, welcome to topic two in our database class. In this video, part six, I'm going to discuss primary keys and surrogate keys. And I'll also provide a detailed example of how to implement primary keys using Microsoft SQL Server. Let's get started. So once we choose a candidate key to uniquely identify the rows in a relation or in a table, we then call that the primary key. And what this means then is we're guaranteeing that the values of the primary key will be unique for every single row in the table. That is every row in the table will have a different value for the primary key. And as such, what that means is that if we know the value of the primary key, then we will have the ability to uniquely identify any row, any single row within the table. So what that means is if I know, just as an example, if I know your campus wide ID, then I can find you and locate you as a unique individual in the university's database system. Even if there are 20 other people that have exactly the same name as you, unique value of your campus wide ID can be used to identify you as a specific individual human being. So we choose a candidate key, we elevate it to the status of the primary key, and then the primary key can be used to uniquely identify any individual row within a table. So I thought what I would do, rather than looking at this in the form of a slide, is show you a live demonstration of how to create primary keys in SQL Server. So here we have SQL Server Management Studio. And I have this little four table database that allows us to have employees who work in departments. And employees can also have, maybe they're really good at, I don't know, negotiating, or maybe they're good at you know, playing trivia or something like that. Whatever sort of employee skills we want to keep track of. And we keep track of which employees have which skills in this employee skill table. Now you can see in these little database diagrams here in SQL Server Management Studio, that we have these little symbols next to some of these column names that it is a key symbol, right? So this in Microsoft's database diagramming tool is the little icon or little symbol that we use to visually indicate which column or columns are serving as the primary key within a table. Okay, so here you can see employee ID is the primary key in the employee table. Department ID is the primary key in the department table. Skill ID is the primary key in the skill table. And we have a composite primary key here, which consists of the combination of employee ID and skill ID. Okay, so both of those together make up the primary key. Now, with that in mind, let's see how we can set a primary key. So I'll just go in here and I don't know, go into the design view on the employee table. And you can see currently that employee ID here is marked as being the primary key, right? It has that little key symbol next to it. So let's see how we can set those. Now, as a general piece of advice, when working in SQL Server Management Studio, if you're trying to figure out how to do something, the first thing that you can do is try right-clicking, <laughs> okay? But let's say that uh, I want to change the primary key setting here. I right-click on this, and you'll see I get an option that pops up that says remove primary key. So if I click on that, you'll say, hey, are you, well, it's not going to let me do this because I already have a relationship, sorry. Let me choose another one. It's not allowing me to do this because that employee ID here is linked to this employee ID over here. So I would have to break this relationship first. Let's do it with department ID down here. That one should work for us. So we'll edit our department table just as a sake of illustrating this, how to do this. All right. So I'll right click on department ID. I select remove primary key. And eh, it's not gonna let me do it. And let's delete the relationship just to make it happen. So I'll click on yes. We'll see we no longer have a key symbol 
next to department ID. If I want to restore that, I can right click and say set primary key and the key symbol will return. Now, another thing I want to point out here is you will notice that there's this little, I know it's very small, but there's this little asterisk after the name of the table on this little tab here. And if you see that, it means that the design or structure of the table has been proposed to be changed, but those changes have not yet been saved. So essentially we have unsaved changes to the structure of the table. So if I were to try to close this, it would say, hey, do you want to save those changes? I click on yes, and it will make those changes. Okay, I gotta make that. So now it's changed and we have department ID established again. You'll notice I had to break the relationship between the department table and the employee table in order to illustrate that, a connection between those attributes. So I'll just put that back in for the sake of us being able to see that. Another thing you can do if you prefer a different method. Oh, I want to show you a few other things. Let's take a look at employee skill because that has a composite primary key. If I decide to remove this primary key, you'll see that it removes the primary key symbol from both column names. Okay. Now, if I want to create a composite primary key and I right click and say set primary key, that's fine. But if I try to do that again on the skill ID below, you'll see it has removed the primary key symbol from employee ID. So... How do I get it to set a composite primary key? The trick here is to select both columns first. In Windows, you can do that by holding down the control key. So if I select both columns and then say set primary key, you'll see the symbol appears next to both of those columns now. Similarly, I could always go up to the table designer option on the menu and choose set primary key from there. But I personally like to right click because I think it's easier. So just a little demonstration there of setting those keys. And that's what's illustrated on this slide. All right, finally for today, we have this notion of what's called a surrogate key. Now, a surrogate key is a primary key that we've just invented for our own sake, for our own purposes. Right? Like a campus-wide ID is a surrogate key. Right? It's just a unique identifier that was created, in this case, by the Division of Information Technology at the university to uniquely identify everybody. It has no meaning outside of our university environment. Need was identified to have the ability to uniquely identify individuals who are associated with the university. And I'm sure a discussion was held, what could we use for that? And ultimately, it was decided to just invent one. So when you do that, what you're doing is you are creating a surrogate primary key. So if there is no natural numeric primary key, good practice in database design is just to create your own surrogate key. Now, one of the things that I find a little frustrating about your textbook is in its efforts to keep things simple, it uses a lot of examples where you have primary keys that are text fields. And uh, I generally recommend against that in enterprise level database design, right? Text generally takes more storage. It's less efficient when doing things like comparisons, et cetera. So if you need to make, just invent your own primary key to identify something like a campus wide ID or an employee ID or a customer ID or a product ID, right? These are all examples of possible surrogate to primary keys, make them numeric, right? It's better if it's numeric. It's better if it's a number. The computer will be able to match values faster, takes less storage space. It generally makes the system more efficient. Okay. So do keep that in mind.